Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Tyler. How are you doing? That's perfectly fine. Cool. Let me paint a scenario for you real quick. You've been living life comfortably up until now, and you just decided to go to a restaurant or maybe a bar and just have a few drinks or something nice to eat. That's when, out of the blue, you just feel an uncomfortable tap on your shoulder and you're just not having it. You look to this person and you're about to tell them off. That's when you realize it's someone you've known for many years. Someone you're very comfortable with. You could even say they're probably your best friend. Then upon that realization, you just smile and you say, Hello, old friend. Man, wouldn't it be great if life did that every day? What the fuck was I talking about again? Ooh, hey, a new video game. I'm gonna play it. Catch you losers later with your social lives. Metro... <coughs> Bullshit. Uh, Metroid Samus Returns. What could be said about this game that released in 2017 September something? Shit, I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out today. But before I get ahead of myself, what is Metroid and why is it held in such a high regard? Well, as an expert Metroid player myself, since I grew up with the Prime Trilogy, the only trilogy that matters, I can safely tell you what the series is about. Taking you back old school style in 1889, that's when Nintendo, a young boy of Japan, decided to make a card company. But he was getting beat out by Yu-Gi-Oh! and he decided to go into video games instead. That's when they made the Gay Man Watch, and since people are just homophobic, they didn't like that one. The only right move after the Gay Man Watch was to make an entertainment system, but you see, Netflix wasn't invented yet because it still hadn't been patented, so that's when they decided to just put games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and we got gems such as... Wait, what the fuck's a Mario brought her? And the Legend of Zelda? They made a game about F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife? Fucking copyright much? Jesus Christ, I don't know about this Nintendo guy anymore. <sighs> there we go, Metroid. That's when we got the critically acclaimed Metroid. Made by... Oh shit, this is embarrassing. I don't know how to read that name. That's a good thing they don't know that. Made by that guy. And everyone knows that his game was superior to the Zeldas and the Mario Bros because his decided to side-scroll just like Mario, but decided to be an exploration game like the Zeldas. So it basically ripped off both of those games. I think you better be coming with me, kid. I told you I'm not a kid! You, you rip-off artist! Ah, back up, back up! I have a shoplifter on the loose! Now you might be asking yourself, how do I fit into all this? Well, my first exposure to the tit uh, titular bounty hunter was in Super Nintendo Superstars Battle Royale. And it was there that I found out that I suck ass at games and she's a horrible character. Then it wasn't until 2003 when I owned my very first console, the Nintendo GameCube. I remember opening that package still to this day. It came with two very different unique games. One shitty game called Wand Waker that I'll probably talk about later, and another one that changed my life for better or for worse, Metroid Prime. Okay, so my next outing with Samus would be Metroid Prime 2 and Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's there that I found out she is the best character in Smash Bros. history. 1v1 me, noob. Then by some other miracle, through emulation, I'd be buying the other games, I was able to play through the whole series. Starting backwards, I thought Fusion was pretty good, if not a little bit linear. Zero Mission was probably the best remake ever. Super Metroid is without a doubt the magnum opus of the series, aside from Prime. And I couldn't even finish the original Metroid because that's archaic as shit. Maybe one day, old friend. But what about Metroid 2? Return Samus. Well, I'm glad you asked. My initial thought was, wow, this game really sucks ass. And then it seems someone over at Nintendo overheard me and they were like, wow, that game does suck ass. Let's remake it, guys. So how do I feel about Metroid Samus Returns? This is probably the hardest question that I've ever been asked in my life. One that I've been contemplating for months. But I finally have come to the conclusion about Metroid Samus Returns. It's serviceable. Much like its predecessor, you know, Metroid 2 being held back by the Game Boy, I feel that Metroid Samus Returns is held back by being on the 3DS. Now that's not to say that the 3DS is bad by any means, I'm just saying it feels like they didn't utilize the hardware to its fullest potential. I'm genuinely shocked that there's no benefit to get the new 3DS for this game. It feels like it was made with the old 3DS in mind, not the new one. I don't know, personally I just think this game kind of cheaped out, especially in the looks department. Now while it's not the ugliest Metroid game, they're just a 
a few questionable things that make me turn my head and go, what the fuck? Like, for example, the color palette that this game favors is purple and brown. It, oh my god, honestly, it looks like Barney the Dinosaur just shat himself and that's what they threw in the game. I think the biggest mistake of this game is the fact that it doesn't have lighting. I'm alright personally with the lack of polygons, the lack of texturing, but at least have some decent lighting to hide that ugliness. I personally think it looks ridiculous the fact that Samus doesn't even have a shadow. Alright, so she ain't the best looker in town, but hey, don't be a shallow piece of shit and give her a chance. How does she sound? Does she sound sweet? Well, I gotta say, there's a couple of gripes that I have. Personally, I think that the weapons could've sound meatier. Like, the missiles just sound extra weak, especially the super missiles. Now, I'm not asking for an over-the-top sound design. No, 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 no. What I'm asking for is just a little oomph with some of the weapons to make them sound bassier. Because as it stands, it's almost like it's weightless and doesn't have an impact at all. The creatures sound pretty good, though. Bosses do a great job of striking fear when you're fighting them, while normal enemies sound perfectly scared and fill Samus' psychopathic tendencies. Alright, so it sounds serviceable. How's its taste in actual music, though? Luckily, this game has you covered, renditioning every other game but its own original soundtrack, which gives me mixed feelings because I'm very happy to see my favorite soundtracks make a return. However, it's pretty strange. Because this is a remake of the second game, right? So it's just a little strange to see music from future titles like Super Metroid, Other M, and Fusion make a return on this. And yeah, I know that the games in the past have reused music. It's just kind of strange because you'd think they'd go full out and use the full soundtrack of the second game. I don't know, it's just for me, I thought they were going to do the same thing that Prime did, where they used some of the same soundtrack, but they had awesome original soundtracks like that main theme, Fendrana Drifts, and so on and so forth. Hell, now that I think about it, Metroid Samus Returns reuses the item jingle Get, you know, that... And it doesn't make sense here because that's a prime jingle and each game had their own jingle. The original Metroid had its own and it was the foreground. So why couldn't they just add onto it like subsequent games? Metroid Fusion, they went with the homage of making it sound artificial because Samus's suit was artificial. It just feels a little too tryhardy because they're just trying to appease the fans at this point. As a result though, it sounds very uninspired. All right, so how's this bitch play? She got any tricks up her sleeve? A few. Are they good? I don't know, let's talk about it. So I got the back of the box right now, and right here it says, new abilities to enhance combat. The next little blurb is Aeon Abilities, which is the newest addition to the Metroid franchise. And it says right here, utilize four all new abilities to aid you in your quest. Scan Pulse. Oh boy, Scan Pulse. Briefly reveal nearby breakable objects and map info. Alright, so that ability in itself is pretty good, but there's one thing that I don't like about it. It reveals nearby areas. If it just revealed breakable areas, that would have been cool. Or hell, you could have even mapped out the whole room, not nearby rooms. Because for me, when I was actually stuck or I just wanted to get an ability and I didn't know where it was, and it mapped out nearby rooms, I kind of felt spoiled. Made me a little depressed too. It felt like going to the movies with a friend who's already seen that movie and they reveal the scene that's gonna happen to you before it happens. The next important blurb to look at is the melee counter one. And it says right here, parry attacks and take aim at your foe. Basically, you just press a button as a foe is charging at you and then you just knock him back, stun him, and if you hold the free aim button, you can do an instant lock on and shoot at them, which usually results in an instant kill. I personally think the only time to ever use it is on a boss because then it results in an animation where you take them down and it just looks badass. You probably caught what I said earlier about free aim. And that just so happens to be the last blurb on the back of the box. It says, shoot wherever you please with full 360 degree range. That's pretty much it. If you're a Metroid fan and have played Prime, it's akin to pressing the L button and free aiming wherever you'd like. I personally don't like it, but luckily, like most of these new abilities, you don't have to use them. And the reason I don't like it is because unlike Prime, it's not really a necessity because in Prime, you need the Z axis as well. You have a full 3D room that you have to aim in. If they were going to implement something like this, they could have used the new 3DS hardware and used that C-Stick nipple. I'd hate to say a point that I made earlier, but I am pretty disappointed that they didn't utilize the 3DS to its fullest potential. However, the thing that makes me more annoyed than that is the fact that we can't customize our controls. I'm aware of the other games that don't let us customize our controls, and I'm not excusing them either. I was really expecting it with this one, though. At the very least, I was hoping to choose whether or not we could use the touchscreen at all, but hey, whatever. Beggars can't be choosers, I guess. And no, while I don't mind the touchscreen use, I'm just kind of disappointed that we had to use it and it wasn't utilized to its fullest potential. I don't know if you see a theme yet. 
I think it would have been cool if we could have used the touchscreen for like some puzzles or something like that. Hell, to add insult to injury, they even made the map boring on it. The thing that pisses me off the most about the map, though, is the pins. A lot of the weapons share the same color palette, and it's just annoying that the pins that we use to bookmark locations look exactly like other colors. So it's like, hey, I think I have a weapon for this. It matches the same color. And then you go to that spot, and it's like, nope, sorry to mislead you, bud. We're just gonna slap you on the ass and send you on your way. Other than that, it handles pretty nicely. Alright, so she plays nice, but does she have a nice story to tell? Because let's be honest, fellas, we want a woman who could tell us a nice story at night, right? I think this analogy got out of hand. Alright, let's be honest, it's a Metroid game, it's not going to have much of a story to it, but the intro sequence is pretty nice and does a good job of explaining it, and I'll do my best to summarize it. Alright, so those jellyfish boys, you know, the Metroids, the people who've been killing for the past few games, apparently the Galactic Federation found their home planet, and it's our job to go fuck their shit up. So we explore their homeworld, SR388, destroying everything in our path. And at the end, that's when we get introduced to the Baby Metroid, which will be the catalyst to Super Metroid. The Baby Metroid imprints on us, thinking we're its mother, and then that's when we decide to get the fuck out of there. But that suddenly halts it when we come across Pterodactyl Boy, the surprise ending boss to this game, and we're given a cliffhanger to... Metroid Fusion! That's right, the X-Parasite does something. I guess that's for the next game. Well, that's an anticlimactic end. Okay, so... All that being said, I did have fun with the game. It was fun. If you're a Metroid fan, obviously you've picked it up already. But if you're just new to the series, you can enjoy this one. I wouldn't recommend it as your very first one, but one of the first ones you do pick up. With that said, enjoy your day, evening, afternoon, and night.